Hello, welcome to the Heart Power Adventures podcast series on running a business from your heart. I'm David Gold. I'm the founder of Heart Power Adventures, and we connect and develop and work with entrepreneurs who want to run businesses from the heart, who want to be connected to the passion that got them into the business in the first place and that they're bringing out into the marketplace through their products, and also do that in a way that has integrity, but also profitability. And in this series, we have been and continue to interview entrepreneurs, thought leaders, consultants, people who not only run their businesses from the heart, but help other people run businesses from the heart. And when I was envisioning this series, one of the first names that popped to mind is someone who is a, gosh, just a, at the, I think at the forefront of this, or the heart of this is Kevin Clark. So Kevin, first of all, thanks for joining us. It's good to see you. You bet, glad to be with you. And I also am here today with uh, Artem Smirnoff, our production. We haven't figured out a title for him, but he's, he's the guy that makes it runs and keeps me from getting my fingers in the boards where they don't belong. So Artem, welcome. Glad to be here, man. So I was, I was walking the dogs this morning. I was thinking, how am I going to introduce Kevin? Because Kevin, I literally, you are one of the toughest people to summarize. And, and, you know, and it's not like I'm not, I like to think I got some talent and being able to describe people, but I tell you, I think probably the best way is to talk a little bit about how I met Kevin. I was uh, involved both personally and also professionally as a board member on a, a, on a, a nonprofit up in Massachusetts that, that pretty much was <laughs> close to running into the ground. And I, I heard, well, this guy, Kevin Clark's coming up. And I said, well, who, who's this consultant? And they said, well, he was the brand manager for the IBM ThinkPad and blah, blah, blah. And little did I know that he was also a neighbor, even though we, we were both traveling up to Western Massachusetts, both here in Chapel Hill. And what I discovered quickly was that Kevin had this incredible affinity to not only understand how to encapsulate what it is, your product or your offering, but also to understand kind of the heart of the business and the culture and what we're doing. And also, and as I describe him, he's also a futurist. He's, the, he's one person that always is two or three steps ahead. And I don't know how much of it's just brilliance and how much of it is understanding the marketplace and how much of it's intuition, but also has the ability to kind of take that understanding of what your business is and what your values are and how to present that in a way that the public will appreciate and understand, but also how, what that looks like in the future. So gosh, that's a long-winded way of talking, Kevin. And I'm sorry about that, but at least it gets me kind of focused on, on who it is I'm talking to here. And Kevin, just in, in the way of, of accolades, was the chief brand strategist for the IBM ThinkPad. Um, he is the president and founder of Content uh, Evolution and, number, and on so many boards and both advisory and fiduciary and just a really sought after person to have his thought and his heart into businesses. So Kevin, okay, that's enough about me talking about you. Um, so Kevin, tell me a little bit, what I wanna talk about is your background, but especially as it relates to branding slash storytelling and how the sense of what that is has kind of evolved from someone that thinks, well, you're just here to help me develop a brand and get a logo to kind of the more global and deep perspective that you bring now. Sure, and I'll just uh, uh, comment on the uh, fact that you think about me as, as a futurist. Uh, Dave, it's just paying attention, hmm. right? The, the the fact is that most of the time you you can you know step a little bit into what possible might look like by, by just being attentive to what's going on now, right? Uh, you know the the, the well worn William Gibson uh, quote that you know the future is already here. It's it's just you know not well distributed yet, right? Is you know, it's, it's true. So when, when you think about, you know, is your brand well distributed? You know, do people have a sense of who you are, what you stand for? Uh, when we came together uh, in the past, you, these, these words would sound familiar to you. Relevance, context, and mutual benefit. You know, who are you? Um, why are you here, both as a collective group, you know, in a business or an organization? Do you know who you are, right? If you have the capacity to, you know, create expressive capacity about who you are, 
then you can launch that relevance into a number of different contexts, whether it's economic contexts, cultural contexts, uh, the, the, the power together of, we know who we are, and we know that the customers are, are different, you know, depending on those different, you know, cultural and economic circumstances, then you have the ability to, you know, co-create in a way where there's mutual benefit, right? That's the multiplier effect, right? If I could, you know, have a, have a brand or a, or a company that I understand your relevance and I try you once and it's not for me, that's a transaction, right? And the fact is I'm probably not gonna come back because, you know, there is an alignment between, you know, that brand and that person or that brand if it's business to business and the other company. So, you know, part of the game here in branding is customer selection in the front end or client selection if, if it's business to business, because you have to know who you're coming into the world for and whether the invitation that you're going to offer them, you know, come to my party, you know, come, come you know, experience our brand whether they're going to accept that invitation. And if they come once, whether they're going to enjoy it enough to accept the invitation again. You know, it's either going to be one time, you know, thanks, that's not for me. Or, you know, you're going to, you know, you know deliver something where the promise of the brand and what they actually experience are unified in a way that I, I say, yes, this is for me. All right, and I want to, I, I'd like to do it again. Um, so at, at the beginning of, of, you know, any brand's existence is an invitation. You know, I've kind of boiled down, you know, branding and brand, uh, you know, power into, do you have an invitation that people are willing to accept one time? And if they accept it and the experience is good, then I'm going to be willing to, you know, to do it again. And that's why we've, we've talked in the past about the fact that brand and experience together, brand experience is more powerful than brand or experience taken separately. So that's my opening thought for the people who are uh, listening in today. So, so you talk first of all about understand about you as the, whatever the company or the founder or the designer. Mm -hmm the relevance of the product, right? And then realizing that it's not going to be relevant. It's not going to be all things to all people. It's going to be relevant to a certain segment of the population. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's not talk about product first, right? Because the, the fact is um, the product or what you bring to market, product, service, you know, experience is the end result of the collective intelligence of either the sole founder. And mm -hmm. so I'm a single member company. There's nobody else. It's just me and, and me connecting with my, my customers or clients, or I have employees, or I have an ecosystem of, of people who are trying to, to do this. Are we all on the same page? And are we connecting with the people that we're trying to serve in a way that's, that's consistent so that, you know, when, when I talk to one member of the team, it's not, you know, completely different from someone else, right? So that's a, you know, that's part of that. And then what you choose to make, products, services, experiences, taken together, you know, what we call those offerings, are, you know, from the power and the intelligence and the intention of all those people working together. So all that has to proceed making something. Right, is that you all know why you're you're working together in the first place? Make yeah. sense? Yeah, this it's great. This is actually what we did last month in our Commonwealth group is really figuring out. Well, it's always about how to bring your. We talk about being passionate in the product or really bringing your vision into offering is what you're talking about there. Right. And then, and I think we talk about the brand experience. There is this loop where the feedback, the experience of your customer base, whoever is that the, the experience of your market in, in turn is it informs your passion, it informs your vision. 
because you start to see what are people actually relating to? What is it that I want to bring out to the world? How is it actually affecting people? And so there's this continual mutual information going on between why you're bringing it out into the market and what you're bringing out into the market. Right. And I might say, you know, for, for those who are listening is my scholarship is really in brand endurance. It's mm-hmm. not in uh, consumer products or fast moving consumer goods. I, I'm, I'm more expert in things that are considered purchases, right? Such as, you know, buying a, uh, you know, a more expensive an electronic item or a car or a, a home uh, or a relationship that you're going to have for a long period of time, you know, such as, you know, someone that's a service provider uh, that that might be your accountant or your lawyer or your um, e- even, you know, your hairstylist, right? That those are, you know, you're, you're going back again and again and again, and you you want that to continue. Right. So I'm not saying that it has to be, you know, expensive, but it does have to be, you know, well considered and that you want to continue with it for, you know, a longer period of time. And that you're that what the brand stands for to some degree is congruent with what you want to stand for in the world. Well, that's beautiful because you want something enduring. Mm-hmm. I mean, not only John, not only in terms of recurring revenue, but just because there's there's relevance there, there's authenticity there. Mm-hmm. When you have an enduring, it's not you're creating right. an enduring relationship. That's and right. So, and so, why the, what's the what's the connection or go jump off from that into brand experience? How does brand experience create enduring relationships? Well, let's let's go back just just a little bit into you know the, the origins of of branding. Uh, the you know branding prior to. Uh, the advent of, of work done by David Ocker out at Berkeley at the University of California. Prior to that time, uh, branding was very synonymous with advertising, right? That advertising would build an, you know, an image in the marketplace and they would talk about a brand personality. Now, I personally believe that brand personality is a weak version of brand character. So I try to advance the the notion of, you know, brand personality is kind of two-dimensional. Brand character, you know, would be expressive capacity to say that this is, you know, a brand that I could at one level be friends with over a long period of time. uh, And to some degree, people fall in love with, right, the the things that they that they use. And you you fill in, you know, how that might, you know, relate to, to to your life. But you know the if you know uh, Marie Kondo that that is talking about decluttering your home, and she asks you to pick up the object and tell you whether it's bringing you joy, and if it isn't, you know, consider you know eliminating it from you know from your life and your life space. Well, brands are functionally the same thing. You know, would I like this to not be part? Of my life going forward, and for those that you're saying no, I, I I really you know would not like this to you know to go away. Those are the ones that are functionally more like character, right? That that they have a good character that you you want to stay with. The um, I mentioned David. I had an opportunity to meet with David toward the end of his academic career out of uh, out of Berkeley, and we're walking ar- around and. You know, he really suggested that I, you know, that if I wanted to, you know, pursue this further, that I should be working with his co-author, who was a younger man named Eric Jakobstaller. And Eric at the time was at the University of Virginia. Uh, he's since founded, you know, a successful company called Vivaldi Partners up, up in New York. But the point is, um, when you, he created brand architecture. And that, that is the most dominant metaphor in terms of creating brands and all of the surrounding elements and attributes that make it work. And I had a fundamental disagreement with that because architecture um, implies that it is a fixed structure that once it's up, it's done, all right? And I don't believe that brands 
are buildings. I believe brands are living systems, right? And therefore, I was, you know, even at the time saying, I think that brand ecosystem uh, and, and living systems is a better way to think about what a brand is and how it should function and how it should relate, you know, and, and function relative to other brands and other economic actors in the marketplace. And, you know, David kind of agreed, but what he said is the world is not ready for that idea and architecture is more accessible, right? Um, so he was, you know, he was going for this more, you know, kind of like Newtonian metaphor, right? Of, of you know, applying architecture and physics. And I was, you know, ready to kind of move forward. Now, Eric kind of ag agreed with me when I met with him uh, at University of Virginia. I actually took Heidi. I took my wife with us to have lunch and it was delightful. We've been, you know, friends. He's, he's on the board of my uh, company today. Um, and I think that what you have seen since the publication of my book, Transcendence, and, you know, more, you know, the more recent, uh, you know, evolution of thinking is that you hear more and more people talking about you know, brands as living systems, as opposed to architectures, right? And so we have to acknowledge, David did a tremendous service by creating a framework for people to take it out of advertising and advance it into actually being a profession, right? So I honor, you know, David for that moment in time, but I'm part of the school, which I, you know, literally, you know, helped introduce, um, to think about this and, and to push for brands as, as being living systems at the end for no other reason than what's behind them, people, all right? It's the connection of the people who are the uh, people who are moving something into the marketplace and the connection that they have with their customers and the dynamic friction between those and other economic choices that you can make, uh, both in terms of how you spend your money in general, and whether in a category you're going to choose us or someone else. Oh man, that's 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 brilliant. I love that uh, analogy of you know brands being um, living systems and not architecture. I feel like a lot of people just don't have the the vocabulary to talk about branding. I um I actually work at a branding. Um, you know, we we work for a. I work for Paradigm Innovations and we do branding for a lot of, you know, startups and smaller companies, some big companies too. But um, my question to you would be how, how important are, how important is the visual aspect to branding? Because branding is not just visual, obviously mm -hmm. it's, it's living. Visuals are a big part of it, but how important would you like, do you consider visuals to be yeah. part of branding? Well, the short answer is that we're kind of wired as visual creatures. Um, mm -hmm. I, when, you, when you come out of the womb, right, you've already imprinted on some senses and none of them are visual because you don't really have good eyesight, right? And you will continue to not have good eyesight about six to nine months into life, right? It's unfocused and so on and so forth. Did you hear things? Did you taste things? Uh, you know, did you smell them? Those are dominant senses, right? As you're in the womb and as you emerge into the world, sight comes as one of the things that becomes very dominant and important. So we have a tendency to think of branding as logos or symbols or a visual, you know, uh, vocabulary. Uh, we, I have a practice inside of content evolution called sense mapping. And here, what we're trying to do is, is to reach back and recognize that yes, visual is important, but so are the other five human senses, right? What do you sound like? What, what do you smell like? What do you taste like? What do you feel like? And to the degree that those can be expressed, they can't always be expressed, but if you're, you're in a rest, running a restaurant, um, it's all available to you, right? If, if you're you know, running a hotel chain, it's all available to you. Um, if, if you're doing something that's web enabled today, not so much, right? Because I 
you know, I can see you, I can hear you. Uh, to the, we're we're not doing holograms. Uh, you know, even though we talk a lot about um, the ability to um, you know to do things that are you know related uh, to you know immersive you know three dimensional right experiences. Most people don't have access to it related to your brand, right? But there is tech that, that's on its way that is going to be able to transmit smell, right? It, it, it's in development. Um, so a fully immersive uh, experience is going to be possible. It's not too early to start thinking about it. And then we try to connect those senses to sense making, you know, what's happening in the head, heart, and gut. And then we map that over time so that you have a full systems approach to both the brand and the experience that can start with you know a symbol and start with a name right naming is important I, I i get really discouraged by the fact that people come up with you know contrived you know something that kind of sounds cool kinds of names but they don't mean anything and as a result you're going to have to spend inordinate amount of money to infuse the name with meaning for money that you probably don't have as, a, as an entrepreneur, right? So it's better to start with a name that's, that's meaningful and memorable, right? That, uh, you know, there's a company right here you know, that, that has offices, you know, Align Technologies and their technology Invisalign for braces, it's a brilliant name, right? Because in the category, you know, you know that, that that means invisible alignment and I don't have to put metal into my mouth, all right? That I'm going to, you know, be able to align my teeth uh, in a way that also I'm still, you know, an attractive human being, you know, along the way of, of getting straight teeth, right? It's, it's a pretty good value proposition. And if people would be more thoughtful about the names that they select and the marks that are associated with them, uh, that would be more meaningful and memorable, they'd be spending a whole heck of a lot less money down the road trying to in infuse it. So that's, you can tell I have a point of view. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's incredible. I, uh, I, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned, I, I always thought about how long it would take for us to, to capture smell digitally. Um, Cause I was like, I was always thinking, I'm like, these, these, these dating apps are, you know, they're taking over the world. As soon as they introduce smell into those, that's just going to be, that's going to be next level. And, and people are just going to, they'll be able to smell each other's pheromones. How, yeah. how wild would that I be? I mean, I, I've spent, you know, time in a, you know, kind of like behind closed doors sensorium at Fermanish, which is one of the largest, you know, flavors and fragrance you know, manufacturers in the world. And the fact is that there are, you know, you know, just like music, there are certain notes, okay, that go into the, you know, creation of a scent. And, you know, the tech is based on a tower that has different scent modules that represent those notes. And so you can transmit the signal of how much, what percentage of that to put out into the tower and then, you know, move into the air. So that's, that's the way that they're thinking about it now. That's the rudimentary, you know, basis for this. And I think it's being done at MIT. Oh, that's, that's incredible. So listening to both of you, and, and I, I'm hearkening back to something when you talked about the difference between brand mm. personality and brand character. Right. And, and um, associating with a question, actually, I was in uh, a beautiful forum that, that Artem and his company put together called the Vortex, which is almost 500 founders that are mm -hmm. that meet together in various ways. And, mm -hmm. and on it, someone asked me about what does it mean to run a heart powered business, which really made me think about doing this podcast to find out. Mm -hmm. So it seems that, that, that heart power, that what you're really pointing to and you're fleshing out is what does it mean to bring the personality is almost two dimensional. It's almost like just, a, you know, it's in, it's in the mind. It seems like it's almost in the mind. You, and then you're talking about bringing fullness, you know, bringing heart, bringing somehow bringing the entire human experience into into brand, into this into this marketplace. Well, I, I would say, you know, both and, right? You, uh, 
the, the emotional intelligence that's required to associate with and you know like or or love a brand in your life, you know, professional or personal. Um, in the case of ThinkPad, you use it for both. So I spent a lot of time understanding that, yeah, it's the same thing that allows me to do my job at work, but then relax at night and watch a movie or play a game or whatever, that it, it's, it's one of those both and. When I was delivering keynotes at the time, I'd say, look, I spend more time with my ThinkPad than I do with my wife, all right? There are implications, all right, for that degree of intimacy with an object, all right? And so the, the, the degree that we can, you know, explore what does that mean, right? And how do we, you know, make that, you know, more relevant, more pleasurable? Frankly, the, the company that's done the best job in that space is Apple. Now that's an old, you know, hack, but the fact is that, um, you know, people have a relationship with that device and they've created an ecosystem, um, which by the way, Google has too, right? There are other people who've done it, but, if, if you think about the walled garden that Apple represents, it's really curated very well, right? And so if, if, you're, if you're part of it, um, all the way, and it starts at a very basic level. Apple has the best out of box experience of any manufacturer on the planet, right? They, they try to stage what's happening when it arrives and start to build that relationship when you start to open it. You know, how many, you know, well, companies pay very short shrift to the fact that, well, we just want to get it to you safely. So it's in a brown cardboard box, you know, and it's kind of boring or the, you know, you're losing an opportunity. You're losing an opportunity. Um, you know, if you went to the Dale Carnegie school, they say, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Well, guess what? Same's true for your, your brand experience, right? But you know, if, if the, you know, if the pencil sharpeners, you know, in accounting tell you that you can't spend money on it, well, then, you know, there's a, it, it's not an important aspect of running your business. If you want to see this, you know, if you want to see branding at its top of its game, you can't, you, know, you can go to Cupertino, right, and, and see a version of it at Apple. But if you want to see it at its very best, you go to Japan or you go to South Korea because there the design department reports to the chairman's office. Mm. And it is considered to be a key valuable asset and organization that delivers competitive advantage that they do not want any levels of organization separation between the top layer and the board of directors and the designers. All right, so that just tell you, tells you that design as an ethos and design as a discipline of which, you know, brand, you know, is, is part of that. Um, go look and see how many companies in our culture, you know, honor design and branding at that level and, and experience. And, and the answer is, I, you know, I can count them on one hand. So I have a couple, I, you've been incredibly generous with your time today. And I have, I have a couple of questions specifically designed for our, our audience sure. of, of heart-driven entrepreneurs. So you, I mean, I, I can't envision how many companies and you know, just business people you've worked with in, in terms of seeing what works and what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. What if you were going to give you know three pieces of advice or three differentiators between those that make it no don't in terms of be able to create a brand experience that is reflective of their values and that people will resonate with? What are the you know what are the high points? Well, there's a very simple model that I use. It's called the three V model. Um, I had it in a um, it was first authored as a you know. Uh, in addition to a chapter in, in a book called uh, uh, Value Above Cost. Mm. And the, you know, the, the 3V model is this, values, value, valuation. You know, same word used you know, in three different ways, right? And so the tra trajectory is if, 
you know your values as a company and you have shared values with the people that you choose to serve in the marketplace, you now have the capacity to deliver value to them and to others, right? And the result, if done well, is valuation, right? It's either valuation in the stock market for shareholders, if you're publicly traded, or it's internal rate of return, if it's for you know your own you know company and your own you know system of understanding you know the value that you're creating based on assets, um, or if you're a not-for-profit, it's you know the valuation in terms of the metrics that you have about your ability to deliver your mission, you know, out to the the people that you're, or or the you know the outcomes that you're trying to bring about in the world. So the fact is, you know, it, it works. And most importantly, it doesn't work backwards. You can't set a set of valuation metrics that will then lead you to the value that you want and then you know, have you know, the people organize uh, you know, somehow around you know, some kind of, of constantly changing values right? because you've decided that you've got a different financial target. Mm. So, you know, the, the fact is that values, value, valuation is a is is an intentional, you know, direction, all right, that you know creates the outcomes that most businesses want. But what they don't see is they don't see the the, the fabric of connection. And honestly, you know, some of them just get lost and are not thoughtful enough to be able to pay attention to this telos, this directionality uh, that creates the, you know, the, the result that they want for both themselves and their shareholders. So um, I, I put that out there. It's really easy to understand, but you have to want to grok it, embrace it, and then act on it. So, so one, one time, Kevin, and I don't know how we probably, I don't, countless numbers of interactions, because Kevin's <laughs> the guy I go to and, and it, when I just don't know what the, you know, when I'm, I'm really trying to read the tea leaves and figure out, well, how my life fits in with the future. But one of these days, you're not going to blow my mind, but this isn't one of us. That values, value, valuation. It's so Kevin, too. I mean, it's such a great example of everything you're talking about. You know, it's simple. It's heartfelt. Yeah, And yeah. most of the time, the, the companies that are, are that come to me, um, they're lost. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 they have... You know the, the the fabric of their existence has started to fall apart or has become less knowable. And you know, in a way, they come to me for branding, uh, or for customer experience, uh, or a strategy. And but what I'm giving them is business metaphysics. Yeah. Is I'm regrounding them back into here is the reality that best suits you and the context in which your existence fits into the other things, right, that are happening. And then you can, you know, regain expressive capacity in terms of what you're promising and how you're behaving, which is ultimately the experience you deliver. So, you know, I, you know, I'm a practitioner in business metaphysics, but nobody buys that. But that's <laughs> what they're, but that's what they're getting. And that's why they feel good about it later is they feel grounded in reality again. I, I just love that. I, I, I see your superpower. And I mean, I've, I've seen it, but I also appreciate the fact that there is a, there's a metaphysics to this. Mm -hmm. And I think it's one of the reasons we've been able to resonate over a couple of decades. And I want to thank you. I have more questions. I think we'll probably do another one. I really want to talk about some of the future trends, but we we run out of time. Sure, we and didn't get to do any back. case studies. You know, stories are fun, right? But you did get a good unpack of my basic, you know, ground of being. And I just want to thank you so much. You'll be at the Commonwealth Group next week. I want I want to do the I want to go into deeper more of the values value evaluation. I think that'll really resonate. And Kevin, if people if our listeners want to or viewers want to contact you, what's the best way to find you? Right to C E Charlie Edward at contentevolution.net. Uh, and, you know, we have an entire ecosystem of companies. We, 
you know, what we call it a federation. Uh, we have both, you know, members that are in closer orbit and affiliates that are further out. Uh, and, and I have a number of companies that I own, right, that are both in the research, experience, branding, uh, you know, uh, strategy arenas. So uh, I'm glad to start at any point that someone needs uh, advice. But if, if you're feeling a little queasy about, you know, ground of being at, at the moment and want to get back in, in tune with, with what's going on, call. We'll figure out what the right strategy, starting point is. You always do. And I've, I've had the good fortune of sitting in with some of the people you've attracted and um, they're, they're brilliant, beautiful people. And you're just like a magician that gives everybody a little gift. And I've, I just marvel at how your capacity to feel what people need in their business and in their lives and be able to deliver it in a way that's, you know, has values, value and valuation. So Kevin, thank you very much. Will and Artem again, thanks for producing this. We'll sign off now and then stay on for a second too, if you could, Kevin, a couple of a couple of thoughts. Thanks, Dave. It was fun. It was. It's great. Artem, look, look at this. Look what you fell into, man. This, this guy is brilliant. Dude, that was, that was incredible. Very much enjoyed that. So I have a- If, if I was doing that as the preamble for you know, the start of an engagement, that would have cost a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I know Kevin ain't, ain't cheap. So oh one my thing, gosh. <laughs> Ready. I, I redesigned the entire brand system for NEC, which is the General Electric of Japan. Um, oh, wow. So and it was a multi-year engagement with the chairman's office. Mm -hmm. And we got rid of 900 standalone brands and got them into our master branding strategy with NEC first and just started to use common mm -hmm. like NEC cloud, NEC, you know, um, you know, mobile, you know, systems instead of all these contrived names that they came up with that they had no money to support. But every, every general manager in the business thought that they had to come up with a name, right? Some cool <laughs> you know, name. And it's kind of like, no, we're not going to do that. Right. And Guess what the hammer was? It was the CFO's office. He said, <laughs> if, you, if you don't adopt this, we're not gonna get any of you any uh, marketing communication support money. Oh. So, so well. the, yeah, this, this is where COVID has been, COVID, because I could never, I get, you know, two months out with Kevin, because he's always, he was always in the Far East or somewhere, and now he's closer to home. I'm still talking to people in, you know, in Asia at odd hours, but um, you know what? I am so much more productive just not traveling. Yeah, you seem more relaxed too. So did you get a vac? Have you been vaccinated yet? I'm not old enough, no. Oh, you know, okay. So I'll tell you that we, I did. We got Julie vaccinated too. There, anyway, we'll talk more about it. There's there's little corners, mm -hmm. especially with, yeah. Um, so a couple things, one is Kevin, and we can talk about this later. I, Artem, I'd love to figure somehow to get Kevin in, you know, presenting or something in the vortex. Yeah. I think what he says would be so powerful and be such a good company. Oh, man. I see what? a few, yeah, I see a few different things there that we could, I mean, we could definitely collaborate on. First of all, I mean, I, there's another podcast that I'm sure that uh, my partner Grant would love to, to interview you as well. He's the CTO of Wikipedia. But um, yeah, like we do branding. Uh, for startups, but to hearing hearing your perspective uh, would be absolutely um, you know mind-boggling for a lot of our you know a lot of our founders um, you know a lot of the a lot of the startups that we work with. So maybe we can connect briefly sometime and see what we can do there. Well, whatever works. Glad to um, do this today. I'm I, I'm leading a, a discussion with the uh, uh, the. the you know, political leadership team for the state of Washington to talk about this platform that we're delivering to the, the state that will allow small businesses to uh, have an adult adult conversation with, you know, the state about COVID. Mm -hmm. And instead of being told what to do, we're simply going to give them a dashboard that has all the information and it makes recommendations about what you could do, all right, as a restaurant, as a dry cleaner, as a whatever. Um, because the, ch the conditions are changing too fast. And so mm -hmm. uh, rather than waiting for somebody to tell you what to do, it would be great if they just had a, this tool. So we wired in all the data 
from both health and commercial information into one space. Well, wow. really cool. Right? I like the, the brand whisperer. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I have a question if it's yeah. okay. Um, so listening in and thinking about where we're at with our Commonwealth and community, and you were very um, theoretical. Are there like ways of bringing some of these thoughts in practically? Because I think people like to do exercises and they like to, you know, put pen on paper and how this relates to them in that. Cause I, I thought about a lot of what you were saying I was trying to relate it to my own like art studio business. Like, well, what does this concept mean for someone who's, you know, starting out something new they're offering stuff, um, you know and they're at the very basic level of entrepreneurship and how, how, you know, like you pick up these manuals that say, fill in the blanks, tell us your story, you know, um, how, how, how do we like practically pull this in to make it accessible to those who might be just starting out and who need to be applying this and thinking about it. And, you know, cause we're, we're gonna be trying to help people tell their stories by the end of February and have really good, um, con um, stories that they can take out into the public and say, this is who I am. This is my brand. This is what I'm all about. And how to, how to take the theories down to practical steps to help them write that story. Yeah. Um, so two responses. First is you probably need more of what I you know, bring to, um, the School of Entrepreneurship, I'm an ad, named Adam, Adam's advisor to the School of Entrepreneurship at UNC, at the Keenan Flagler Business School. Um, and when, when you provoke me on, on the topic of brand and experience is, I'm really graduate school, right? Uh -huh. I, I, there, there are a lot of people who can get you started, right, with, with, with some of the basics. I'm honestly not as good at that, that because I'm actually advising the people who run other branding companies or are leading okay. brand and are deeply immersed in it and they need to go to the next level. So trying to get me back down, all right, from, you know, from, from that, sometimes it's hard. I, I, what I can do is, as I can tell you that the, what I tell people, you know, to do, to start anything is, you know, think of the brand as a person, as opposed to an organization, and then say, what are the words or short phrases that I want associated with me? What do I want to be known for, right? And yeah. so the, the, you know, the, the, I said, don't do that, right, um, in a half an hour. Get a sheet of paper, a little notebook, right, and do that for two weeks, you know, I have, oh, something just occurred to me. All right, I'm gonna write it down on my, uh, and then, you know, the fact is you, you literally have to sleep on it, right? Mm -hmm. Because not all the attributes are gonna immediately manifest that you wanna be known for. Um, then that becomes the raw material for the creative brief that can drive visualization, that can drive an elevator speech, that can drive a value proposition, that can, you know, all of the common elements that you would associate that are related to brand experience and, you know, you know communication with the outside world that you would have in any base, um, you know, business strategy plan to attract investment. Mm -hmm. So I, I gotta say too, it, it is true. It's, it's, it's like what I feel if I had to go back to traffic court, I could do it, you know, I could probably beat your ticket, but it's not, it's not the highest and best, but at the same time, you do it. I mean, you know, if he hangs around, he'll figure it out. I no, but I, I do, per, you know, I, and I create personal brands for people who are leaving the corporate world and are going to put out their shingle. All right. Or, you know, um, you know, somebody who is, you know, I've even done it for sports figures, all right, that, you know, they're, they're trying to, they're trying to get a deal, all right, you know, so that their brand, you know, will become a basketball or, a, you know, athletic shoe or whatever, all right. And the, you know, the fact is, um, it all starts with, what do you want to be associated with? 
So that's mm -hmm. the, that's the foundation. Mm -hmm. There's lots of places you can go after you get that that list of words, um, and that's actually the beginning of a good name too. Yeah. So I have one more thing, Kevin. First of all, thanks a lot. I really enjoyed this. Really, I mean, besides just appreciating it, enjoy mm -hmm. it, get to show you off to the world that I know you, you know, we're buddies and stuff. I have one. I have one fav one favor to ask of you. I don't know if it's a favor, or whatever. But I would love if you could, if you could spend a half hour or so on a call with with, with Artem and I, because Artem has so much to learn from you. I mean, there's just the way of him soaking in in terms of where he is as an individual, but also in his business and design and stuff. And if you would be okay with just sitting and, and just, you know, letting him pick your brain or pick your heart for a half hour sometime when you got time, I'd really be appreciative. He's, he's is this, a that um, a one-on-one -on -one or are you joining? I mean, either way, I'll join. Well, I, I just, you know, you, you know, figure it out. Um, let's get through what we're currently obligated to do. All right, with with yeah. the team next week, and then afterwards, you know, we, we yeah. can. Good. I just wanted to bookmark it. That's all. Yeah, I I would say that, um, you know, if if there's some, you know, energy, that, you know, foundationally, you know, kind of Rennie, the, the the other thing that you have to know yeah. is that, um, a little bit of my time goes a long way. Yeah. Um, the, you know, sometimes I get involved with something and, you know, by the time we've done a half day, uh, you know, the, the team at the company has six months of work to do. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, I get that. I, I mean, I felt that while listening to you talk, I mean, there's so much that you could have talked about and it was fascinating. It was great to listen yeah, but to. But what I'm saying is that yeah. for, you know, for a lot of, of organizations, you know, that yeah. only get an assignment, you know, to make us a logo, right? <laughs> um, that, you know, getting me involved at the beginning of a conversation, you know, creates momentum for yeah. a whole bunch of things that other people are going to have to work on either in an agency or an in-house yeah. team or whatever. Um, that normally won't spark because the imagination of the people who are buying hasn't been stimulated enough for them to realize, you know, the, the value in, in doing it comprehensively. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I have to do pretty regularly is unmake websites because people start their identity on a website and it's not scalable. Mm. Uh, because no, that, that's that. the first thing they do is that we're going to throw up a website and then they, they realize that what they've created um it, it can't it, it it can't work on you know a t-shirt or a ball cap or side of a truck or you know all the th you want to start right with with the foundational stuff right <laughs> And then you you have lots of opportunities for expression, yeah, creative expression. And so the um, so one of the good ways to use me is to make sure that you know if if you're getting involved with with the client and you think it's important, it's going to be an important relationship. Is you know, I I can come in and get them primed for something, you know, more um, fulsome. Mm -hmm. than what they had imagined or, or asked yeah. you to do in the first place. Uh, so well, I think the... it's a good um, foundation because I think we're spending the next couple of months on storytelling and branding um, with our clients and with the Commonwealth. Yeah. And so having like a start off place that helps encourage people to do the work that, you know, um, to get no, them going to the next yeah. level. Yeah, you know, I'm reminded, you know, I'm going back to my childhood, you know, there are stories and there are stories, okay? What my, my mom used to say about, you know, storytelling was, Kevin, are you telling me a story? <laughs> Which is, are you lying, right? Yeah. And storytelling um, can simply be a gateway for the business to become so fanciful that they're promising stuff that they can't do, which is yeah. only going to lead to disappointment. All right. They get way, I mean, I'm a skier, you know, and, and so the phrase, you get way over your skis, you're mm -hmm. going to fall over and hurt yourself. All right. And so the, at the end of the day, 
if you're going to go through the storytelling uh, process, you have to keep people on the side of authentic narrative as opposed to fiction. Yeah, yeah. And we're in I the mean, world of we're in the world of fiction right now, even in politics, reality. Yeah. You know, people are accepting you know some stuff, yeah. and it's only going to lead to disappointment. Yeah. Well, yeah, and we want people to. I mean, part of our business is helping people create that authentic voice for themselves, so that they can build community and relationships and trust to, in order to have clients and you know customers and audience and that kind of thing. So I only challenge you this in this way. You can give them all the tool sets and I could take somebody through, here's a heroic story, you know, journey story, all right? And here's how that works. Um, but at the end of the day, if you don't challenge them to say, now prove it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. you, you just gave me a story back it up. People don't like to do that, all right? But but if, if you're the teacher, I think that it's incumbent upon you to say, now, show me that what you just said is real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole thing that Tom was talking about, the step five of going for your head. Yeah, going, yeah, yesterday, yeah. So Kevin, look, anyway, it's been great. I've just really enjoyed it. I look at the smiles on, on, on Artem's face and Rennie's face. That means the world to me as well. So <laughs> I like when you make people I love happy, that makes me happy Good. too. I'm glad. And we'll, we'll, we'll see you next Thursday. And let me think about this too. I, obviously I'm always thinking about how I could use what I'm doing to promote you. So we'll, you know, value, values, value, valuation. All right. Enjoy. Go back Take to care. one of your three refrigerators and make lunch. That's what I'm going to do. Take care. Thanks, Cheers. Kevin. Pleasure to be with all of you. Bye-bye.